welcome to New York City in mid-November, where the temperature is dropping and the holiday season is just around the corner. That also means big-time college basketball is back at MSG. Tonight, the semifinals of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer. In Game 2, number 18, Texas, takes on Michigan State. But right now, an ACC Big East clash. The Maryland Terrapins take the court against the hometown team, the St. John's Red Storm, looking to reclaim their place on the New York City sports scene. And welcome inside the world's most famous arena, game one of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer. Maryland and St. John's both advancing to the garden by winning regionals they hosted. Now they're looking for a berth in the championship game tomorrow night against either Michigan State or Texas. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Pash alongside Len Elmore. Heather Cox will join us shortly. Well, Len, it seems like every year the matchups in November get better and more interesting, and that's the case with our two games tonight. Well, absolutely, Dave. We've got two games with two different sets of storylines. In our second game, Michigan State and Texas lost significant key players to graduation on the NBA draft. They've got to find a way to reload with youngsters. And in the first game, St. John's in Maryland. St. John's in the third year of Norm Roberts' three-year plan and respectability. This game is that first step. And Maryland, an underachieving team two consecutive years without making the NCAA tournament they're going to be hard-pressed to not to do that this year and in talking with head coach Gary Williams today he said chemistry better this year and he attributes that to senior leadership well absolutely senior leadership very important the last time around you take a look at DJ Strawberry Mike Jones they're holding up their end of the bargain thus far the Kenea Beckway shot blocker rebounder has got to step it up if Maryland is going to finally get to the NCAA tournament while they're playing and you mentioned Strawberry that is a very familiar name name in New York City, Daryl's son DJ, looks to come up big in his dad's old town. And at this time every year, St. John's learns some important lessons off the court. We'll explain. And we'll look ahead to the rest of the month. A feast of big matchups coming in the next couple of weeks and a couple here tonight. Michigan State, Texas, but first, St. John's in Maryland. Next. Nothing like shopping for a little fresh produce. What do I want? College football insight or a Cobb salad? ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Well, there's only one place to be on game day. Sadly, life can't be all about football. Yes, sometimes the missus wants a walk-in closet. The kids want a clubhouse, and you want a room big enough to escape it all. At the Home Depot, we've got the materials and know-how to help you lay a foundation, hang drywall, and turn your home into the ultimate football-watching environment. So you can watch more game day. Get ready for college hoops. Ready. Dishes it to the perimeter. Gets it, baseline. Reddick fires. Buries it. 2K Sports College Hoops 2K7 features. Chant Creator. Team Unity. Advanced Ball Control. The number one College Hoops franchise four years running. Coming soon for Xbox 360, Xbox, and PlayStation 2. Rated E for everyone. Intelligent key technology that knows you. Seats that hug you. A ride that spoils you. The next Nissan Maxima. Part of the next generation of Nissan thinking. Whatever it is, you can get it on eBay. Y'all ready to order? And y'all ready to check me out in the amazing picture clarity of DirecTV HD? It's broadcast in 1080i. I totally don't know what that means, but I want it. For the best in HD, get DirecTV. Semi-final number one of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer, Maryland and St. John's, and the Red Storm will be shorthanded tonight and for the rest of the season. With more on that story, here's Heather Cox. Dave, St. John's went out in the offseason to recruit offense, and it was counting on the immediate contributions of freshman Derwin Kitchen. But yesterday, St. John's announced that Kitchen has withdrawn from the university for failing to meet the NCAA's academic eligibility requirements. And it's a big loss for St. John's a year ago. 
ago. They averaged just 60 points on 41% shooting. They were certainly hoping that Derwin Kitchen could bring that quick offensive fix. Another one guy that's going to have to step it up and pitch it out is Lamont Hamilton as we look at our 2K Sports Star Watch Mike Jones from Maryland. Well, Mike Jones, 6'5", senior, once considered the second best high school prospect behind LeBron James. He's had to battle past the hype and disappointment, become a quality player. Lamont Hamilton, 6'10", senior, top 10 in conference rebounding last year, an inside presence with an improved perimeter game. And joining Jones for Maryland will be Hayes, Strawberry, Gist, and Abekwe. And for Hamilton and St. John's, Lawrence Patterson Spears, and another name familiar to New Yorkers, Anthony Mason Jr., his father, Anthony Mason Sr., who actually played high school ball with St. John's head coach, Norm Roberts. Gary Williams, hard to believe it's been 18 years now. Back at his alma mater, recently agreed to a two-year contract extension through 2011. And the last time Maryland made it to Madison Square Garden 2002 in this event, they won the national title. Norm Roberts in his third season, won nine games his first year at St. John's in that rebuilding project that Len talked about in the open, and then 12 wins last year. They started great last year, including wins against Pittsburgh and Louisville. Struggled at the end of the year, but they do have all five starters back, and hopes are high for St. John's. Well, it's all about depth for St. John's. They've been able to replenish, get some new guys. We'll see one in Avery Patterson. And St. John's plays an up-tempo game. Maryland starts out in a man-to-man. -man. And the turnover on the opening possession by St. John's in a back way with the first points here in New York. Well, that's a good way to start if you're Maryland with pressure defense, forcing the turnover, easy baskets, and Maryland will continue to press until St. John's starts to recognize how to break it. We mentioned that Maryland won the title in 2002 when it played in this event to start the season. This event has provided some major momentum for a lot of teams. Florida was unranked last year playing in this event. And obviously, the Gators went on to win the national title. Syracuse in 2003 played in this event and went on to win the championship. Missed shot, and the follow by Spears drops as the buzzer sounds. Well, two big bodies inside for St. John's. The rebounding that they need, not a good offensive team, at least last year, and certainly this year, shooting a lot better, but the offensive rebound certainly helped. Brick by DJ Strawberry, a Beckway gets to the loose ball. And then cutting backside with Strawberry, but an errant pass and a Maryland turnover. And Dave, Maryland's comfortable playing this quick pace. They've done it. They may not have done it well over the last couple of years, but this is the way they play. For St. John's over the last couple of years, as Heather mentioned earlier, last year only 61 points a game, deliberate style. They're trying to play more up-tempo, but you see the pressure really limits their ability to run the floor. Here's Eugene Lawrence, a junior from Brooklyn. A great pass underneath. Hamilton unable to score. Second chance, and a traveling is called. Traveling violation on Lamont Hamilton. Here's that tempo you're talking about with Maryland. Explain this, Len. Well, you take a look again at the pace, which is possessions for 40 minutes. As the pace or possessions have gone down, the number of turnovers have gone up. And so Maryland really not with a true point guard over the last couple of years. We know John Gilchrist, quality player, more of a lead guard. And they haven't had a real natural point guard since Steve Blake. They think that Eric Hayes, the freshman, number five, will be that guy, particularly since he admired Steve Blake, kind of models his game after him. But in this game, it's all about the point guard who's going to distribute and set guys up. St. John's foul on Eugene Lawrence. That's the first foul in the game. 19 wins each of the last two years for Maryland and Burst in the NIT after 11 straight NCAA tournaments. But Coach Williams liking the chemistry. If Beckway is back, he thought about turning pro. In fact, applied for the NBA draft, then withdrew his name from consideration. Numbers not great to start the year, but you would expect that to change. Well, you would hope so. And again, Abekwe is fiddled with his release on his jump shot and his free throw. You know, there was a time when he shot the ball, he held it way over his head, couldn't get any real accuracy, was missing long, short, left and right. Started to pull the ball down a little bit. I think it's a little bit too low right now. He had it one time near his forehead. Now it's almost under his chest. With more on a Beckway, here's Heather Cox. 
Well, a year ago, he declared for the NBA draft and then went to one draft camp, but didn't get invited to the big one down in Orlando, so he decided to stay. Then he became a member of the Nigerian national team, played in the World Championships, and Coach says he's stronger, more aggressive because of that experience, and this year being the leader that Coach Williams had always hoped he'd become, Dave. And a 30-second timeout by St. John's. The Red Storm unable to get the ball in against a Betway's defense on the baseline. UPS, covering more of Europe before noon than anyone. UPS, covering more ground faster than ever. Winner of this game between Maryland and St. John's will play the winner of our second semifinal tonight. Michigan State and Texas tomorrow night in the championship game. Following the consolation game between the two losers of our semifinal games. Full court pressure again by Maryland. St. John's had to call timeout as he was unable to get the ball in bounds last time. This time they do get it in and Mike Jones commits the first Maryland foul. Well, you see, Dave, where the Maryland pressure has really stymied St. John's thus far. They now want to get out and they want to run. They want to utilize their prowess on the boards. Eight in the nation in rebound margin last year. And that's how you run, by going to get it off the glass. They've been able to get a couple of offensive rebounds in a couple of possessions here. But they would more like to push the ball up the floor, get into the flow, get their shooters open. Here's Anthony Mason, Jr. Father played many years with the Knicks, 13 years in the NBA. Spears, who has the long bucket for St. John's, unable to connect that time. Here's Strawberry, averaging 17 points per game to start the year. Buries a three from the corner, Maryland by four. And then a quick foul called on Strawberry his first, and the second on Maryland. DJ Strawberry, leader of this team, Take a look at a leader of another team in the past, Daryl Strawberry. Big man with the Mets back in the 80s and even with the Yankees in their championship years in the 90s. Hamilton gets the dish from Spears, can't hit the shot. Spears pulls down the rebound. And then a block by Gibbs. And then an offensive foul is called. That's on Spears, his first. Well, if you know him, Roberts, you don't like the result, the calls that turn the ball over, but you love the effort. And once again, I mentioned the fact St. John's eighth in the nation last year in rebound margin. You know, they have guys who can go get it. It's all about them being able to finish. Yeah, they're one of eight from the field. They were second to last in the Big East in field goal percentage and in scoring last year. As a backway hits, he has five of the eight Maryland points. And I like that jump shot that time by Kenny and Beckway. Got the ball right about where his forehead cleared his vision so he can see the rim. Patterson unable to hit the 18-foot jump shot. And St. John's touched it last. Red Storm one of nine. Again, the Beckway has tinkered with his jump shot, going to a variety of shot doctors to give him some lessons. And right there, almost picture perfect. Good follow through. Kept the ball above so he can get some arc. And if he can continue that, he's going to raise his scoring average because he's a guy that Maryland severely counts on. Meanwhile, a turnover by Maryland as Eric Hayes was inbounding the ball. It hit Lawrence of St. John's and then hit Hayes again while he was uh, out of bounds. So it is St. John's basketball. How much of those shot doctors help you then? Did you have one when you were playing? No, I didn't need one. I, <laughs> I think mine was beyond hope. <laughs> Needed a shot psychologist, huh? Uh, yeah, that's true, but shot doctors can help if they tinker just a bit. Anthony Mason hits his third three of the year. St. John's, even though it struggled tonight shooting, a much better offensive team than last year. They were dead last in the country in threes made. And you notice the offensive rebounds for St. John's still gives the jump shooters confidence that they can raise up and shoot it knowing that their guys are going to go get it. And eventually they'll get hot. Ball gets away from Gisp, but Strawberry tracks it down. 
quick entry pass there off the inbounds by Hayes. Maryland doesn't like to pat it. They just throw it in. And Strawberry takes it down the lane and scores. He's got five. 10-5 Maryland. Lawrence challenging a Beckway, and he commits the foul. His first, third on Maryland. Maryland by five. Well, we mentioned Norm Roberts has better shooters, better scorers on this team, and he's getting some of those players from New York City. More on that when we return. Michigan, Ohio State at 2.30 Eastern, followed by Cal USC at 8, Saturday on ABC. Get ready for college hoops. Reddick dishes it to the perimeter. Gets it, baseline. Reddick fires. Buries it. 2K Sports College Hoops 2K7 features. Chant Creator. Team Unity. Advanced Ball Control. The number one college hoops franchise four years running. Coming soon for Xbox 360, Xbox, and PlayStation 2. Rated E for everyone. Nissan Maxima with CBT, part of the next generation of Nissan thinking. That diamond is my ticket out. Biggest one he'd ever seen. You gonna show us where it's hidden? I don't give a damn who's down there. Kill them all. Diamond. Rated R. Starts December 8th. The 2K Sports Common Troops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer, is brought to you by 2K Sports, creators of College Hoops 2K7, the number one rated college basketball video game four years running, and in part by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. And tonight's game is being broadcast on ESPN2 HD, presented by Olivia. Back at Madison Square Garden, where Maryland leads St. John's by five. And with more on the Red Storm, here's Heather Cox. This early in the season, it was surprising to hear, but Coach Roberts admitted that these two games in Madison Square Garden are absolutely critical to his season. This is a program that is courting the city of New York. The type of publicity he could get over the next couple days, being on the cover of the papers, is critical for a program that has been steeped in controversy and with the Knicks struggling there's an opening for a local hoops fans interest and if St. John's needs any inspiration it need look no further than what Greg Schiano and his undefeated Rutgers football team has done in the New York area and I think guys they have been the ultimate role model for St. John's. Yeah it's interesting we were talking with Norm Roberts about that today he doesn't necessarily see a correlation potentially there with his basketball team compared to Shiano, but he certainly has a respect for what Shiano's done with Rutgers and how it's energized this city. Well, Norm Roberts has had a taste. He's 23 and 33, and this is third year at St. John's. Four of those 23 wins, wins were against ranked opponents. And so he has had an opportunity to show people that his teams are capable. He's just never had the personnel, the depth, to be able to stay with opponents, particularly in the second half of the season. He's been able to recruit guys from New York, gain some of that depth, and the more quality wins that they get, the more of the attention of New York players he'll receive. A backway fouled by Hamilton. That's his first and the third on St. John's. And then also, Roberts understands the importance of being in Madison Square Garden at the end of the season. They weren't last year. They missed the Big East tournament. The top 12 teams in the 16-team league advanced to play the conference tourney here, which is St. John's home floor, at least for many of their games. And you know, that's a terrible feeling. That's like living on a block, having a block party, and nobody inviting you to it right there in front of your door. And so Norm Roberts, that's his first mission, to get his team to respectability and as Heather mentioned, and as we've discussed it, this is the type of game that's that first step on that journey. A Beckway now with six. And again, full court pressure by the Terps. As I mentioned, 
Maryland will continue to press until St. John's finds a solution. Nice play by Eric Hayes to break up the pass. Hayes with a floater. Compared by many to former Terrapin Steve Blake. Hayes, just a freshman, played for his dad in high school. His father, Kendall, at Potomac High School in Virginia. See, the problem St. John's is having is that once they do break the pressure, they're not attacking the zone press. And an offensive foul on Hamilton. They're just settling. There's the inbounds right there, the long arms of Bebekwe, making it difficult to pass, but they're just... Maybe a, a just mindless pass by Karan Calhoun. Freshman, a little bit nervous against this Maryland press, kind of rushed it a little bit, really didn't think, look, and locate. Five turnovers by St. John's. Only two made shots. And four fouls now after Hamilton commits his second person. Again, when you finally break the pressure, you've got to attack. You've got to push it and gain an advantage. Force Maryland out of that press. Here's Jones for three, buries it. That's the second triple for Maryland tonight. And St. John's calls for time. Maryland was third of the ACC in scoring last year. Putting points on the board was not their problem a year ago. Well, certainly Mike Jones, one of those guys who started halfway through the season last year, averaged about 13, 14 points in the last 15 games. We mentioned he is a guy that was a, rated the second best player in the nation behind LeBron James, never really lived up to the hype. He's a player, though. We're in that number 23, which uh, Steve Francis wore at Maryland. This is game one, game two of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer, 18th ranked Texas against Michigan State. Kevin Kevin Durant, everyone is talking about Craig Oden as the best newcomer and maybe the best player in college basketball, but Kevin Durant, who is playing for the Texas Longhorns, a terrific talent, some people think might end up being better than Oden. Well, he might be better suited for the pro game with Oden, who won't start his play probably until January. Here's your chance to see Durant. And Strawberry with the gem after another St. John's turnover. Seven now for Strawberry. Again, Maryland just waiting to pick off errant passes to deflect and then go in transition. And St. John's not able to attack even when they break the press down. Lawrence on Hayes. Nice move with the block by Gist. Here's Hayes trailing into the paint. A Beckway can't stick it back up and in. Traveled first. Well, here's an opportunity to attack, and Lawrence sees, well, actually, this is prior to that, just a bad pass. And the possession after that, Lawrence had the ball, drove to the basket, but it was a good defensive play. So Maryland playing defense out on the floor as well as guarding the basket. Calhoun is off from three. Mason with the rebound. Put back is too strong. A Beckway clears to Hayes. Nobody gets back on D, and Strawberry is off the mark with a two. Last touch, though, by St. John's. Well, if you're Gary Williams, you don't really dislike that shot. Maryland on an 8-0 run, the last minute and 40, because it's in an open floor situation. You've got your board covered. You'd like it maybe to draw some iron, but nevertheless, you get possession. But when your guys are in a flow, you want them to feel confident to pull up and take shots from spaces where they can make them. Oh, a Beckway wide open as St. John's fell asleep on defense. Eight now for a Beckway. St. John's thoroughly confused. We talk about this being a first step on their journey to respectability. They're stumbling right now. Only Georgetown was better in terms of scoring defense in the Big East last year, but St. John's having a whale of the time in the early going tonight with Maryland. There's a missed three by St. John's, and Maryland Strawberry with the ball now. Bravis Vasquez, a freshman from Venezuela. Gary Williams thinks very highly of him. Finds Jones for another three. Maryland by 17. And a lot of people thought of Mike Jones as an athlete who could fly through the air with the greatest of ease. He's been more of a catch and shoot guy. Maryland just kind of figured that out over the last couple of years. He's been put in a position where he can be successful. And so far, he's gotten the job done this year. 
Strawberry gets to the loose ball after colliding with Patterson. Strawberry gets it back. Oh, what a shot falling down. 15 straight for Maryland. And St. John's calls another timeout. DJ's father, Darrell, certainly plays with his son's efforts and the effort of the entire Maryland basketball team tonight. Well, the Terps have come here with an awful lot of energy, and it all begins with the pressure. And then once you turn it over, once you get the ball off the board in transition, you let your athletes go. And DJ Strawberry right now demonstrating why he's the leader of this team. And speaking of Strawberry, Darrell, the National League Rookie of the Year back in 1983 with the New York Mets. Played there through 1997, All-Stars as a Met. And then resurfaced with the Yankees after drug problems caused his suspension from baseball. Played parts of five seasons with the Yanks from 95 to 99. And boy, we were happy when he came. <laughs> the Yankees had it. Yeah. Boy, what a career he had. And his son, DJ, playing a point guard last year, moved to the wing this year where he's more comfortable. As you see Strawberry's highlights from a terrific career, including several World Series titles. And Darryl Strawberry was a pretty good basketball player from what I understand in uh, Los Angeles. And another St. John's turnover as Darryl Hill coughs it up. That's eight by the Red Storm here in eight minutes. Well, the one thing, and you watch practice as I did today, and, and St. John's went over every facet of Maryland's pressure. It's one thing to practice against it. It's another thing to play against it. And, and right now, St. John's just not able to play with confidence. They've turned the ball over. They're now hesitant, not really attacking. And when they do attack, it's almost blindly. They've got to get some leadership out there, some guys not afraid to throw over the pressure, not afraid to dribble around the double team to get their team going. Parrish Brown is coming to the contest and coming over for the block is Hamilton. That Mason in the front court. And that might be a confidence builder, Dave. Good defensive play, transition bucket, finish with a dunk. A little bit of light at the end of that tunnel for St. John's, possibly. And speaking of star fathers, DJ's father, Daryl Strawberry, in attendance. Anthony Mason Jr., his father playing, longtime member of the Knicks and Hornets. Hill clears for St. John's. Now it's important for St. John's now not to try to get it all back at once right now. Have some patience. Look for good shots. Hill, tough shot. Wouldn't drop for him. A big-time score a couple years ago was injured most of last year. Hamilton missing. Vasquez out of there with it, then he lost it. Two on one. Hill leaves at the last moment for Hamilton. And an awkward sequence there for St. John's. Well, that was an opportunity again to score in transition to give your team a little more confidence. And Darryl Hill, the senior, usually pretty good in transition, just fumbled it. Jones in the lane. Gets the roll. I like the elevation of Mike Jones. Not only his jump shot, but there in the paint. He brought that athleticism with him. And as I said, people expected him to be a high flyer. But he's more of a catch-and-shoot guy. But he's demonstrated some finesse in that paint. That's eight points now for Jones. Parrish Brown commits the foul. His first and the fourth on Maryland. We'll talk with DJ Strawberry's dad, Daryl, when we come back to the Garden. At Nissan, we decided to create a new version of a classic, the Nissan Maxima. With 255 horsepower and CVT technology, the Nissan Maxima redefined performance. With available Bluetooth, hands-free capability, and the intelligent key, it reinvented convenience. The next generation of Nissan thinking in the next Nissan Maxima. Enjoying Guinness Draft in a sports bar is a great idea. Yes, this is much better than the last bar. This is much better than the last bar. Much better? Brilliant! Brilliant! Please enjoy Guinness Draft responsibly. It's ready. Introducing Gillette Fusion Hydrogel. Fusion's hydrating emollients and lubricants form an invisible layer that protects your skin from the first stroke to the last, adding more comfort to your shave. Gillette Fusion Hydrogel. You've waited all year for endless shrimp, and now it's almost gone. 
Don't miss the only time of year to enjoy all the shrimp you can eat. Endless shrimp and soon only at Red Lobster. A century so young already has its game, courtesy of an age-old rivalry. They always meet this time of year, but never before like this. Carve it in stone. Saturday, Michigan and Ohio State. Number one versus number two and a Buckeye fan in the midst here at the Garden. Yeah, he's just trying to wait to find a way to waste the time until tomorrow at 3.30. <laughs> Coverage starts at 2.30 on Saturday for Michigan and Ohio State. Buckeyes have only lost once against Michigan with Jim Tressel as their head coach. Will that continue on Saturday? Well, DJ Strawberry off to a great start for Maryland, which has a 19-point lead. His father, Daryl, is here tonight, and he is with Heather Cox. And Daryl no longer lives in New York, but you're here during the playoffs at Shea Stadium. Very warmly received. What was it like then, and what's it like now to come back to the city that you spent so much time in? Well, it's always exciting coming back to New York, you know, with you know all the things I accomplished here and you know, all the wonderful people, you know, that, that are here in New York. Um, I'm just grateful, you know, to come back here and see my son to play, have an opportunity to play in New York, too. And you're joined by your wife and some friends, and every time DJ's done something well in this game, I've watched the reaction. They're cheering. You're stoic. How do you stay so calm and composed? watching him play well because i've been through this uh, this is not nothing new to me you know I've, i played in new york i know the pressures of playing in new york and i know the excitement of it and i know the the downsides to it so um, you know playing here and having a great career here um, i just come in and be relaxed because i was used to the fans always you know cheering and booing and and I just always ran out there to be relaxed and play the game the way the game's supposed to be played. After growing up and watching you play baseball, how did DJ escape the baseball diamond and get to the hardwood? Well, I don't know. I mean, that was his choice. Like, he's a great baseball player. He was like a switch hitter, and, you know, he just didn't want to play, you know. And I have another son, Jordan, who's 12 years old, and another basketball player, so he's following behind DJ steps. Well, with a name like Jordan, he would have to, right? Yeah, he's, he's a pretty good player. He's been playing since he's five years old. He's been playing AAU, so I think he's going to be exciting, too. All right, we'll let you enjoy the game. Thanks so much for your time. All right, thank you so much. Okay. All right, Heather, meanwhile, Mason Jr., his father knows a thing or two about playing in New York City as a member of the Knicks, Anthony Mason Sr. Here's a Mason Jr. for three, short, and it's rebounded by Parrish Brown. Midway through the opening half, Gist gets down floor and gets the leg. Well, this has been a game sparked by Maryland's defense. Begins with the pressure, the turnovers, the easy baskets in transition. St. John's never able to get on track. They've been able to hit the offensive glass, but their big guys just can't finish. And this is a team that sorely needs to string together some good plays to maintain their confidence. Darrell Hill unable to hit, but then Bowers over the top of the foul, his first and the fifth on Maryland. Well, some thought that St. John's would win this tournament, and the Red Storm still might, but trailing by 19 midway through the first half here in Madison Square Garden in New York City. The 2K Sports College Hoops Classic benefiting coaches versus cancer. With Len Elmore and Heather Cox, I'm Dave Pash. Michigan State and Texas will play later tonight in game two of our doubleheader. Chance to see one of the top freshmen in college basketball, Kevin Durant of Texas. Here's Daryl Hill. And a three-point shot too strong. Calhoun gets it swatted away by a Beckway. Here's Strawberry in the front court. And a St. John's foul. That's the fifth team foul, first personal on Patterson. And I mentioned it's the Maryland defense. Even when you get the ball in the paint, there's somebody there from Maryland to contest you. Calhoun with a decent enough job to corral that ball inside, but a Beckway waiting for him. And Maryland in transition has kept St. John's defense on their heels all evening. Now, if you're an ACC team like North Carolina, Duke, and some of the other schools, Georgia Tech, that are favored to be at the top of the league, Maryland picked to finish seventh by the ACC media. If you're one of those teams, are you taking notice of what Gary Williams' club is doing here in the first 10 minutes? Absolutely. And, and the reason is, obviously, you don't want to be able to have to play a team that can take you out of your rhythm. Maryland's pressure has been able to do that. Now, granted, these teams have played against Maryland's pressure year after year after year. Coaching staff's able to scout and recognize where the weaknesses are and hopefully impart that to their teams. But as I said, it's one thing to practice against it, and it's another thing to play against it. And this year, more animated 
more excited, at least in this game, than I've seen them pretty much all last year. Calhoun fouled by Vasquez. That's his first. Well, again, we talked uh, with Gary Williams earlier today, and he raved about some of the young kids on this team and, and the chemistry and how much better the chemistry is this year. And you can see it on the floor, uh, the way this team plays together. Well, there's an unselfishness about them, again, particularly in transition. After they create a turnover, everybody gets out the run looking for the open guy, and I think that's been their mission. When we talk about the top teams or the projected top teams in the ACC, Carolina, Duke, in the last couple of games we've seen, particularly Carolina against Winthrop, that's where they had the problems against a team that pressures, that'll shoot the three, that'll get out and run on you. Same thing last year in the NCAA tournament with George Mason. Carolina had difficulty with them. So they definitely are waking up and seeing a team like Maryland as competitive. Three-point shot is not there. Just follow won't go. Strawberry stick back does drop. And that's another thing I think they'll be watching as well. Their athleticism, ability to attack the glass and recognize you've got to put a body on a red shirt out here and keep them off. That's 12 now for Strawberry. Patterson connects from three. He had 12 threes on the year coming into this game, a junior college All-American a year ago. And we talk about Maryland's pressure and particularly the guard play. Nice follow by a Beckway getting the loose ball and sticking it in. When you talk about the ACC, that's what you're going to see. We saw a chance to see the, the freshman for Carolina last night, Lawson particularly, and what he's bringing to the table. How about Virginia and Virginia Tech? Probably the two best backcourts possibly in America. Guys that are experienced and that are absolutely terrific defensively as well as offensively. So there's going to be a lot of good guard play. May be able to attack this pressure. Gist with the swat. And then the ball gets stuck. So jump ball. And on the alternate possession, it will stay Maryland basketball. Well, Virginia beat Arizona. So that's uh, another big win for the ACC early on. Maryland by 20. Uh, and, um, and then we're really good at and they, and they lived in the house, uh -huh. wanted to change the color of him, I and mean, it has legs, and I don't know what it is, um, and, and, and there's worms and some bugs, but his head is so tiny. Who would you give a Volvo to? Tell us at volvocars.us. Lease a new 2007 Volvo XC90 3.2 front-wheel drive for $3.59 a month for 24 months. NBA on ESPN. Friday night doubleheader. First, the Wizards look to Gilbert Arenas to continue his stellar play as they take on the Pistons, who hope Billups and Prince can get them on track. Then, the Sixers try to steal one on the road against a struggling Suns team that's trying to regain their fire. NBA Friday, doubleheader on ESPN. Wizards, Pistons, and Sixers, Suns. Coverage begins at 7.30. Live Sunday, November 26th on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. Earth shaking. Ground breaking. NBA League Pass on DirecTV will shatter your expectations with up to 40 games a week of unbelievable action. Basketball like you've never seen it before. Order NBA League Pass on DirecTV. Visit directtv.com or call 1-800-GET-SPORTS. ACC leading the Big East, Maryland over St. John's by 20. We talked before the break about the ACC. Only four teams in the NCAA tournament last year. Gary Williams thought they should have deserved better. The ACC in the last 15 years has won more NCAA tournament games, has won more national championships than any other league. We were ranked... Um, 10th in the country in terms of strength of schedule on Selection Sunday. The ACC was ranked as the third toughest conference, according to the conference RPI, uh, in the country. Yet we, we had four teams in and other leagues got more teams in. So I don't know. You know, I think people have to judge that for themselves. Maryland did not make it to the NCAA tournament last year. As he said, four teams in, and no teams got past the Sweet 16 that got into the NCAA tournament as a Beckway scores again. Well, and again, when you listen to what Gary's saying, absolutely fact, absolutely true. Perennially, the ACC has been one of the toughest conferences, if not the toughest in America. But I think last year, the average teams, the ones who finished 500 in the ACC, fell victim to an I-10 
idea of diversifying the tournament. You know, is it about having mediocre teams in the power conferences versus the quality teams in the mid-majors based on record and who they played? And I think last year, the mid-majors won out. You look at Maryland in 2002 winning the championship and then what's happened and, and part of that is the attrition on the staff of Gary Williams uh, because of the success of Williams four assistants have left since then to become head coaches well that's a total lack of continuity and again assistant coaches are the closest guys to the players I mean they know their heartbeats they know their habits they're the counselors if you will and when you have that kind of uh, disconnect that lack of continuity there are a lot of times things are going to happen and when you look at the chemistry problems that may be attributable to the loss of the assistant you look at some of the character issues Chris McRae out academically Kaner Medley Garrison with arrests I mean those are some of the things those are seniors too those are some of the things that plagued Maryland last year follows on strawberry his second seventh on Maryland you know you look at the staff Keith Booth is the veteran that Maryland staff as an assistant it's his third year yeah, but they're quality guys. Mm -hmm. Keith Booth, Michael Adams, you know, they've been through the rigors. They've played on the next level. You know, they can impart some wisdom to these young guys. They just have to stick around. Chuck Drizel, son of lefties in his first year as an assistant as a Beckway is fouled. That's yeah. Chuck Drizel. I thought that was a young lefty. Huh? <laughs> it looks like I mean, he it? looks just like his dad. Uh, lefty Drizel. One of the finest men and certainly the finest coach that I ever played for at the University of Maryland. His son Chuck, I remember when Chuck was eight years old and would bounce around following us to practice and everything else. Hopefully he learned something. He knows how to recruit, <laughs> that's for sure. With that said, though, Maryland missing the tournament last year. A lot of people can make the case, well, hey, you had Duke and Boston College in the Sweet 16, but nobody got past the Sweet 16 out of the ACC, so maybe it was justified that Maryland didn't get in, and only four teams did get in from the ACC as a Beckway hits the front end of the one-and-one, and, one and now has 13 points. That's a legitimate argument, but looking forward, you know, aside from Carolina and Duke, you've got three, you have six teams, I think, that are also capable of getting in that tournament. Maryland, Boston College, College, even though they lost to Vermont, you know, that's a that's a slight blip on their screen. Florida State, a team that a lot of people thought would have made it last year. We got a terrific player now, Thornton coming back. Look at Virginia, Virginia Tech, two of the best backcourts in America, and then Georgia Tech, another team that's quietly been sleeping since you know being in the upper echelon a, a few years ago, and they've started to reload, and I think they're ready to make a run. Foul on Hayes, his first, and a one and one coming up. Here's the uh, preseason poll. Don't sleep on uh, Clemson there at number nine either. Especially Maryland, because Maryland has been decimated by Clemson the last two years. Hmm. And Virginia, as we mentioned earlier, with a win over Arizona, 93-90, and they'll be uh, playing in the ACC Big Ten Challenge against Purdue here in a couple of weeks. See, I think they've severely underestimated Virginia. Again, two quality guards in Sean Singletary and J.R. Reynolds. This, is, this college game is a guards game. And they've got some players in there who can bang and go get it, and you cut those guys loose. They're going to win their share of games. And as you mentioned, beating Arizona, even though it probably was an emotional win, opening the new John Paul Jones Arena, et cetera, you can't take anything away from that. They will be reckoned with. 39-17 Maryland, 22-point lead. 6.43 remaining in the first half. Game two of our doubleheader is coming up later. Michigan State and Texas. Here's freshman Eric Hayes. Lost the ball. Last touch by St. John's Eugene Lawrence. Shot clock at 17. 13 points for Strawberry. 14 for a Beckway. And Guest turns it over trying to hit Mike Jones under the basket. Picked off by the Red Storm, and then they give it right back. Although now they're going to change it. It was tipped by Maryland, so it'll stay St. John's basketball. And give the officials credit. They conferred and made the right call. Well, yeah, it's early in the season for them, too. Here's Daryl Hill, a senior who is coming off the bench this year. Missed about half the season with an knee injury a year ago after averaging close to 21 points per game two years ago. See, right now for St. John's, it's about execution. As I mentioned, you can't get it all back. Maybe you try to cut this thing to, what, 15, 12 by the end of this half? But you got to be able to execute against a pressure defense. And you got to get the shot off before the buzzer sounds. And that's an air ball. 
Well, that's what I mean by execution, Dave. I mean, they're not able to get open shooters running their sets. And they let Hayes drive right down the lane and score with a left hand. And if you want to get a coach hot under the collar quicker, there's nothing worse than allowing a guy just to waltz down Broadway against your defense, especially when you're down this far. And then Lawrence with a three-point attempt off by about four feet to the left. I think St. John's poor defense so far is what's so surprising about this game after being number two in the Big East in scoring defense. Three-point basket by Vasquez. But Gary Williams says he loves his youngsters, and Eric Hayes and Gravis Vasquez have scored the last five points for Maryland. And again, here's Eric Hayes just pushing the ball up the floor, sees the lane, and just beats his man off the dribble to the basket. You talk about St. John's defense. Last year, this year, they wanted to play an up-tempo game. It seems as though they sacrifice defense trying to play better offense. Maryland four of five from three, and St. John's with only one timeout remaining. Winner of this game to play Michigan State, Texas later tonight, and then we'll line things up tomorrow on ESPN2 with the third place game at 7 Eastern time, and then the championship between the winner of this game and the winner of Michigan State and Texas. And right now, Maryland looking pretty good. 44 to 17. A lot of people thought St. John's would maybe win this tournament. And again, they still might come back. But boy, Maryland looks awfully good. Well, they certainly have. And what they've done pretty much is taking St. John's out of the game early. The big guys to St. John's, Spears, Hamilton, getting offensive rebounds, but not able to put them back. And I think that set St. John's back a little bit. And then the pressure creating the turnovers, Maryland converting with ease. And I think these guys from, from uh, the Red Storm kind of lost their confidence. Shooting just 19% tonight. Maryland with 12 more made shots than St. John's in the game. Hamilton can't hit the triple. Gist pulls it down. At this stage of the game, that's not where Hamilton needs to be, even though that was a wide open shot. You've got to find a way to get it inside. He's got to persevere, try to draw fouls down low. Nice pass to Jones. Hamilton comes over for the block. A Beckway can't step it through, but Maryland keeps possession. Getting to all the loose balls are the Turks. Vasquez, nice feed to a Beckway. And he was fouled. He'll go to the line for two. 18 foul on St. John's. It is raining now in New York City, and as moments ago, Michigan State arriving to the Garden, awaiting Texas in game two of our semifinal doubleheader here on ESPN2. Personal on Anthony Mason is first. Was a shooting foul, so two free throws for a Beckway. McKenna Beckway seems like he's been there forever. Played as a freshman, led the team in block shots as a freshman. Last year played all 32 games. Best part about his presence at Maryland, terrific person, three-year scholar athlete award winner is a Ken A. Beckway. Recognizes that there's more to this game than just playing it. Hits both free throws and now has 16 points. That's more than double his season average, although we knew that that would change, averaging just seven points per game coming in. He's Maryland's leading returning score at 11 points per contest last year. Largest lead for Maryland, 29 over St. John's in the first half. Patterson's three, not there. And rebound by Osby. Again, the frustration just leads to easy baskets for Maryland. You take a shot outside of your offense, you try to force it. Next thing you know, you're going the other way. And this is a learning experience for St. John's. There's Jones rising again for his third three. I say a learning experience. Mike Jones, happy to school him. 11 now for Jones. He's perfect from the field. You talked about it earlier coming out of Massachusetts. He was rated the number two shooting guard in high school behind LeBron James. And it's taken Mike Jones four years, but it appears he's coming into his own in his final year in Maryland. Well, the hype has been unfair. The bottom line is Mike Jones is a player. And as you mentioned, some guys take the long route, others take the shorter route, but eventually they get to the same place. Aaron Spears gets the roll. That's four points for him. 49-19, to 19, Maryland all over the Red Storm. 
St. John's picked to finish in the middle of the pack in the Big East. I'm thinking that this is the year that the Red Storm would really improve. Osby with a second opportunity. There was contact underneath, but no foul is called. And Daryl Hill up the floor. Able to knock down the 12-foot pull-up. First basket for Daryl Hill, a senior from Queens. And you talk about Gravis Vasquez playing the point right now. Kind of gives a international flavor, a guy who understands how to play. And after that transition basket by St. John, told those guys to slow it down a little bit. Even though they have a lead, you know you continue to play for the rest of the season, trying to grow and understand situations. Osby had it stripped. It'll stay Maryland basketball. Mike Jones with three threes for Maryland, and the Terps lead by 28 over St. John's. The guys in the studio will have it when we come back. Does your restless mind keep you from sleeping? Do you lie awake, exhausted, but still can't sleep? Maybe it's time to ask your doctor if Lunesta's right for you. For a limited time, you're invited to take the Lunesta 7-Night Challenge. Ask your doctor how to get seven nights of Lunesta absolutely free and see if it's the sleep aid you've been looking for. Non-narcotic Lunesta helps you fall asleep quickly, so take it right before bed. Be sure you have at least eight hours to devote to sleep before becoming active because Lunesta will help you sleep all through the night. Until you know how you react to Lunesta, you should not drive or operate machinery. Do not take Lunesta with alcohol. Most sleep medicines carry some risk of dependency. Side effects may include unpleasant taste, headache, drowsiness, and dizziness. Hurry! The Lunesta 7-Night Challenge is only available for a limited time. Get your coupon at lunesta.com and ask your doctor today. Even with all its new features for 2007, the most important parts of a Volvo XC90 are the parts we don't make. Lease a new 2007 Volvo XC90 3.2 front wheel drive for $3.59 a month for 24 months. Scott Reese, Steve Lavin here in the studios. Coming up on the Halftime Report, we'll show you number one Florida in action. The Gators with a more impressive outburst than Maryland in the first half, if you can believe that. Plus, we'll investigate why there's so many upsets thus far in college basketball. And uh, Steve, speaking of the Terps, an impressive display. Well, Lenny and Dave are talking about it on air. Clearly a sense of urgency, a late season sense of urgency early. Getting it done on both ends of the floor. Guys, we'll see you at Halftime. And they really are on both ends. That defense holding St. John's to just 21 points and 23% shooting. Uh, last year, they had 56 points and a win over VMI. That was uh, the most they had scored. And their largest lead of last year was 36 in that same game at halftime. Right now, it's 28. Shot clock inside of 10 seconds. Eric Hayes spotting up for another Maryland three. That's what Eric Hayes can give you, a tremendous three-point shooter in high school. He's the kind of point guard that will keep you honest. Over and back on St. John's. Another turnover by the Red Storm. That's 11. Meanwhile, Maryland 6 of 8 from three-point land. And Dave, this is what you just saw, the turnovers. That's what Maryland uses as a building block. Coming into this game, they averaged 23 forced turnovers, 69 turnovers in the three games playing. Right now, that's 11 turnovers for St. John's. And we still got two minutes left in the first half. Battle on the floor. And a timeout is called by St. John's. No jump ball. Eugene Lawrence able to call timeout. So Maryland leading 52-21. And we've got another game left tonight at Madison Square Garden. The second semifinal of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic benefiting coaches versus cancer. Number 18, Texas against Michigan State. And if you did not see Kevin Durant in the McDonald's All-American game or the Jordan Classic, 
You're going to love this kid. He can do it all. Kevin Durant scored 20 points in 22 minutes in his collegiate debut against Alcorn State. Then had 21 points in 13 rebounds in 33 minutes against Chicago State. He can shoot. He can handle it. And he's put on about 20 pounds since he got to Texas. Showed up at about 200 pounds. That good Texas barbecue, I think. <laughs> but if you take a look at his numbers right there, just remember, they didn't exactly play top 25 teams in, in those a couple of games prior to this one. But nevertheless, this guy has the skills. And if you talked about him, you've heard about him, now's your opportunity to see him. And as we said earlier, here's a guy that was compared very favorably, if not better, to Greg Oden the Ohio State phenom who will not play until January. So at least one end of that equation you'll have a chance to see in the second game here today. St. John's with a full timeout, so they're out of timeouts. We talked with Kevin Durant earlier today about, because of new rules, having to play college basketball before going to the NBA. I tell everybody it's a blessing in disguise because uh, I worked on a lot of things these last six or seven months, being in summer school and the beginning of the year. So I was getting so much better on the, on the parts of my game that I needed improvement on. So, I mean, it's just, like I said, it's a blessing in disguise. I thank God for it, man, because uh, my defense is getting better. I'm getting stronger. Uh, if I'd have been in the NBA right now, I mean, I don't know if I'd been playing right now. The new NBA rule is you have to be out of high school for one season and turn 19 years old the year you get drafted in order to enter the NBA draft. So everybody will be sticking around. Odin, Durant, and there's some other good freshmen for at least one season of college basketball. And, you know, you hear some coaches saying that, you know, it hasn't helped at all. But nevertheless, I feel that guys who spent at least one year in a college game, there will be a few who might go to the league the next year, but there have been an awful lot who have to stick around because they've had some weaknesses exposed. Vasquez to a Beckway. A Beckway with 18 and a half, and it's a 33 point Maryland lead. And to finish my point, that set of guys who have weaknesses exposed will have to stay two years, and maybe there'll be a smaller set who'll have weaknesses exposed and have to wait a third year to get to the draft. Pretty soon, somebody might actually get an education, by the way. <laughs> But in the end, guys are going to get better, and that's what it's going to come down to. And they're going to enjoy the college experience. How about the Florida guys, Joaquin, Noah, Al Thornton, um, I, I'm sorry, uh, Al Horford, thinking as they were being cheered on after winning the national championship and raising the banner that this is what we came back for, this type of adulation, this type of admiration, and they're having fun. A back way from deep. What hasn't he done tonight? He's got 20 on 7 of 9 from the field. 35-point game under a minute to go in the opening half. You know, both Horford and Noah are definitely high draft picks in the NBA, but they said the NBA can wait for this college experience. Turnover by Hamilton. That's the 13th giveaway by St. John's. Here's the rule we were talking about, the new collective bargaining agreement that players must be at least a year removed from high school and 19 years of age during the calendar year in which they'd be drafted. And Kevin Durant just turned 18. He turned 18 at the end of September. So if he decides to leave after one year, he'll go into the draft at 18 years of age, even though he will have played one year of college basketball. But the one thing we got to remember, there are an awful lot of 20-year-olds who essentially are freshmen. And they can obviously leave, but they've been able to come in more mature, more mature bodies and play very well. So that barrier only affects a, a smaller set of guys. But still, that one year removed from high school is the key. Three seconds left and a half. Shot clock violation. Parrish Brown missed the three. But I thought it hit the rim. So it should be an inadvertent whistle. It hit the rim. And they're going to put Time back on the clock, 3.1. Watch the shot clock, lower left-hand corner of your screen. Yeah, that's an inadvertent whistle because uh, it's a new possession for Maryland. And so they will get the basketball with 3.1 left. A double-double already for Akene Ibekwe in this first half. And Ibekwe gets it again, scores, and he's fouled. He has more points than St. John's in this first half. He's got 22. The Red Storm now with 21. 
And at the beginning of the telecast, we showed the three seniors, showed what they have done thus far. Abekwe, only seven points and six rebounds in the first three games. We talked about him holding up his end of the bargain as Jones and Strawberry have. Well, I kind of think he hurt us because he's done a yeoman's job. Mm. You take a look right here, eclipse what he's done in the first three games this season, or at least tied it and about to eclipse it. Maybe not. Hamilton from three-quarter court, and that will bring this first half to close. Akene Ebekwe outscoring St. John's, and he also has 10 rebounds in the first half. 58 to 21, Maryland leading by 37 in the opening half here at Madison Square Garden. Now let's go to the studio, our halftime report with Scott Reese and Steve Lavin, guys. All right, Dave, thanks so much. And I guess when one player is outscoring an entire team, then uh, not good news for the entire team. We'll talk more about Maryland and St. John's a bit later on the halftime report. But first, Steve, the defending national champions in action, and they are having a whole lot of fun against in-state rival Jacksonville. There's Joachim Noah, and he had a nice first half. Well, they pretty much all had a nice first half. Al Horford throwing it down. He averages 16 a game. He's already got 17. And then Noah, they just keep running. Well, defense creates offense, gets the Gators out in the open court where they excel because they've got interchangeable parts and tremendous athletes. It has been a dunk fest. Well, that was defense into offense there with the steal and jam. And, uh, yeah, they can shoot it from the outside as well. That's Lee Humphrey for three. And then again, it's the block by... Horford inside, back the other way, and here comes Noah. Steve, they hit 17 straight shots at one point, shooting 79%. Well, it's a fast break drill, three on two, two on one. Good scrimmage for Florida. I like the fact that the Gators are blowing out an opponent like this. That's a good sign. No complacency for the Gators. 79% in the first half, 56-20 at the break. Just getting started here on the Halftime Report. We've seen plenty of early season shockers, but which has been the most surprising? We will delve into that topic on the flip side. The 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer. Brought to you by Volvo. Experience the full line of 2007 Volvos. Who would you give a Volvo to? Volvo for life. And Jared, the gallery of jewelry. Five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores. Uh -huh. want to change the color of him I and mean, it has legs and I don't know what it is um, and, and, and just worms and some bugs but his head is so tiny Who would you give a Volvo to? Tell us at volvocars.us Lease a new 2007 Volvo XC90 3.2 front wheel drive for $3.59 a month for 24 months Giving a gift from Jared can cause quite a stir Hey everyone! He went to Jared he went to Jared. He went to Jared. He went to Jared. You went to Jared. Not every jewelry store gets this reaction, but nothing else is Jared. Jared's selection is truly extensive, built piece by piece to offer distinctiveness, attractive pricing, and style. I went to Jared. That's Jared, the one and only Galleria of Jewelry. He went to Jared. Rather be at the game? Bodog.net wants you to be at the game too. We'll send you and 10 friends to the ultimate football tailgate party for free. Visit BodogTailgateParty.net and enter for your chance to win one of three ultimate football tailgate parties for you and 10 of your friends. Bodog.net style. Enter now at BodogTailgateParty.net for free. Bodog.net. Learn easy. Play hard. Homeowners. Want to get cash and simplify your bills? Ask about a combo loan from Countrywide. It's a refi that you could use to combine your first mortgage, your second mortgage, your car loan, and all your high-rate credit card debt into one easy loan with one low monthly payment. It could save you hundreds every month. Call America's number one home loan lender now and ask for a combo loan. No one can do what Countrywide can. Apply now. Call 1-800-641-8734. A century so young already has its game, courtesy of an age-old rivalry. They always meet this time of year, but never before like this. Carve it in stone. 
Saturday, Michigan and Ohio State. Our Sports Nation poll on ESPN.com. Which rivalry is bigger? Uh, Steve, what do you think? Michigan, Ohio State football? Duke, North Carolina basketball. I go apples and oranges. I'll play it right down the middle. It's like Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly, depending on what you like. If you're a basketball guy, you got to go UNC Duke. If you're a football guy, Woody Hayes, Shem Beckler, the great tradition, you got to go football. Interesting that even on the eve of this uh, big football game, you see 32 states are voting for the blue, the Duke and the Carolina rivals. And speaking of Duke, the Devils no problems with NC Greensboro at the half. It's 45-20, and another good-looking freshman, Brian Zubek, 11 points for the Devils. And Georgia Tech, you know, blowouts today, uh, up and down the board, it seems. Uh, the, the Yellow Jackets big over Georgia State. I think the ACC, one of the most improved conferences, and Georgia Tech very improved this year. Thaddeus Young, a spectacular freshman. Mm -hmm. Javaris Crittenden as well. Now, they're not all blowouts. I mean, we've had some great games and some upsets this week. Uh, Virginia knocking off Arizona despite being down 13 at the break. How about the Catamounts of Vermont on Monday? First win ever, ever over an ACC school. They knock off Boston College. They led by as many as 17 points en route to a 14-point victory. Of course, this is a Vermont team that got blown out by Maryland. And Oral Roberts, before the Kansas game, they had lost to Loyola Marymount. They come back and they knock off the Jayhawks. So, Steve, uh, three shockers in four days. Uh, what was the biggest surprise to you? Well, I'd have to go with uh, Scott Sutton's Oral Roberts team upsetting uh, Kansas last night in Allen Fieldhouse. Not an easy place to play, but uh, give Coach Sutton credit. Uh, they've got a veteran team out of the Mid-Continent Conference. They've back-to-back -back championships out of that league. They've played in the NCAA. They've got tremendous balance right here. We're seeing Marcello Vili, string music, going for seven of eight from three-point line. Caleb Green down low, control in the paint. And Ken Tut, a senior. So when you talk about veteran mid-major teams, we saw it with George Mason. We've seen it over the years with Creighton's and Ball State's and teams that make runs in the NCAA tournament. They expect to be competitive. They're not intimidated. And clearly, Sean Sutton's team last night went into Allen Fieldhouse with a swagger and came out with a W. And this is precisely why none of the big boys want anything to do with the mid-majors as a whole in the early part of the season. So do you see a common denominator, Steve, with these early season upsets thus far? Well, I think guard play, we always talk about in March. NCAA tournament championship teams, you have to be strong at the point guard, the equivalent of a quarterback in football. And in these upsets, there is no question that guard plays. Look at Butler knocking off both Indiana and Notre Dame early. They'll play in the NIT. They've got A.J. Graves and Mike Green, two solid guards. Oral Roberts, we talked about Ken Tut and Marcello String Music, Vili. And even in the Virginia upset, I don't really consider an upset of uh, Arizona, but uh, and here we're seeing Vermont again down low with the Italian Stallions, Trapani and Tripoli. I don't know if, if our man <laughs> left those two behind, but the, maybe the best backcourt of all, fellas, Sean Singletary and J.R. Reynolds at Virginia. Dave Lato turning that program around, and when you have two guards like Singletary and Reynolds, you control tempo, you make free throws in late game situations. They're the point of pickup defensively in terms of disrupting an opponent's offense. So good guard play, so critical both ends of the floor. You can make a run uh, in the tournament. You can upset people if you've got guards. A lot of people thinking Virginia has really turned the corner in this ACC, ready to get back into that upper echelon of teams in a very good conference. Well, we shift gears here on the halftime report. We talk a little baseball and uh, Johan Santana staking claim to a pitcher's most coveted award, and he's done it before. And of course, in our game, it's been all Maryland over St. John's. And Kenny Abekwe, 22 points in the first half. He had totaled 22 points in his first three games. 58-21 at the break. We're back right after this. Get ready for college hoops. Reddick dishes it to the perimeter. Gets it, baseline. Reddick fires. It. 2K Sports College Hoops 2K7 features Champ Creator Team Unity Advanced Ball Control The number one College Hoops franchise Four years running Coming soon for Xbox 360, Xbox and Playstation 2 Rated E for everyone There is a place where the ordinary is always extraordinary. And where once upon a time, 
happens once upon a day. Come live your dream this year during the year of a million dreams at the place where dreams come true. Visit DisneyParks.com. I know. Every guy's looking to go high def. Our pledge is to help you wow them with the ultimate system. Like the latest from LG. LG TVs let you see and feel everything in true digital reality. Now save up to $300 when you buy an LG TV with any home theater installation. Only at Best Buy. Introducing Gillette Fusion. On the front, five blades. And on the back, the first ever precision trimmer. Perfect for under the nose, straightening sideburns, and around facial hair. The best shave ever. Emmanuel and battery power. Gillette Fusion. Whatever it is, you can get it on eBay. Tom Coughlin helped put Jacksonville on the NFL map, taking an expansion team to the AFC Championship game in his second year. Now he returns to North Florida with Eli Manning and the battered and bruised Giants visiting the Jaguars who are fighting for their playoff lives. The Giants in Jacksonville at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. And speaking of football, the backyard brawl over on ESPN, West Virginia and Pitt. Tyler Palco hangs in the pocket and finds Nate Byam, 23 yards connection. And the Panthers draw first blood at home. It is 7-0. But West Virginia comes storming back, and they do it with all-world back Steve Slate. 15 yards untouched for the tying score. 6-11 to go. Again, this game over on ESPN. Baseball, Johan Santana wins the AL Cy Young for the second time in three years. The Twins ace, a unanimous choice once again. Received all 28 first-place votes for a perfect total of 140 points in balloting by the Baseball Writers Association of America. College Hoops News, prep star O.J. Mayo signing his letter of intent to attend USC. The 6'5 guard ranked by several prep publications as the nation's top senior, and it sounds like he really had no trouble making up his mind, saying, USC has been at the top of my list since the beginning of the summer. Decided to wait until now to announce it. Other news and notes, Barry Bonds trainer Greg Anderson back in jail after uh, refusing to uh, to uh, testify before a grand jury. Track and field coach Tara Trevor Graham pleads not guilty to three counts of making false statements to federal agents in the Balco case. And Terrell Davis and Bruce, Matt, Bruce Matthews highlighting the 2007 induction semifinals. And uh, Steve, we look ahead now to the second half between Maryland and St. John's. And really, uh, a lot of people expected the Johnnies to come out and give not just Maryland, but uh, pretty much everybody else a run for their money in this tournament. Why has Maryland been so dominating the first 20 minutes? Well, I think Maryland is a hungry team, a team playing with the hard edge. And that happens when, for two consecutive years, you've not made it to the big dance, not had a chance to compete in March Madness. Their pressure defense has been excellent on the ball. That's created turnovers, disrupted what St. John's wants to do, and allowed the Terrapins to get out into the open court. The key now is first five minutes sustaining the energy and the intensity, the precision offensively. They're doing a nice job executing their flex in the half courts. But again, the maturity of a team is sustaining it for 40 minutes. So often we see teams let up. And if Maryland's going to get back to the NCAA tournament, be able to win in the ACC, they've got to play for 40 minutes. We'll see if the Red Storm can climb back into this one. Just about set for the second half from the Garden. We'll see you back here between ball games. DJ Strawberry and company getting ready to get back to work right after this. The 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer. Brought to you by Infinity, makers of the all-new 306 horsepower G, designed beyond machine. Engineered to alter your experience. Crafted to evoke emotion. Designed to go beyond machine. The all-new 306 horsepower G from Infinity. The Philips HD flat TV with Ambilight is the only flat TV with the power to transform a mood at the touch of a button.
electricity is a button that transforms television. Everything surprised me. The way I look, the way I feel. Hey, I'm 44 years old and I feel great. I'm Dan Marino and I lost 22 pounds on Nutrisystem. Get real results with Nutrisystem for men. Hey, I'm at my playing weight now. Losing never felt so good. Call or go online now to get four weeks of awesome food. Plus, through this special offer, you'll also get an extra week of hearty meals free. With Nutrisystem, you can eat like a man and lose weight. Our secret is the breakthrough science of the glycemic advantage that separates good carbs from bad. Now carbs are no longer off limits. So now you can eat burgers, pasta, and even chocolate. I have a new nickname, Skinny. About 10 bucks a day gets you four full weeks of rib-sticking meals. Get back in the game. Trust me, you will lose weight. Order our four-week men's program and get an extra seven breakfasts, lunches, dinners, and desserts. A full week of food and a $70 value absolutely free. So call now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Game time. There ain't nobody hot as us up in your spot. Giving it to you play by play and shot for shot. ESP winners in the house is about to pop. The NC double layers got the game on lock. And we can't. Let's go. Time. And believe it or not, Maryland leads by 37. It's not surprising that Maryland's leading, but by 37, some thought St. John's might win this event. 58-21 at the half of Ken A. Beckway outscored St. John's by himself with 22 in that first half. Well, as poorly as St. John's played, that's how well Maryland played. Operating on all cylinders, began with the pressure defense, forced St. John's into early turnovers, closed the basket off in the paint, with St. John's getting a couple of offensive rebounds, never able to finish, and that set the tone. St. John started to play very timidly, didn't attack the pressure, and Maryland just had their way, creating turnovers, getting the glass, and then pushing the ball up the floor. St. John shot 21% from the floor. Last year, they were second to last in the Big East in field goal percentage, dead last in the country and made threes, and they had just two in that first half. 13 turnovers by St. John's. Winner of this game will play either Texas or Michigan State. That game is coming up next here on ESPN2. Gary Williams in his 18th year at the helm of Maryland. Trying to get his team back to the NCAA tournament after missing the last two years. Next look on his face. Couldn't tell he was up 37. No. As I've said, Gary's never satisfied, and rightly so, with a team such as the one that he has with terrific potential. He's got to continue to push him. Mason can't hit the three, a Beckway with a rebound. Well, these November games are so important for a lot of reasons. Momentum is one of the reasons, but obviously, when it comes to the NCAA tournament, the committee looks back at how you did in those early season games, and we've already seen one mid-major upset with Oral Roberts beating Kansas. This would not be an, a, a mid-major type situation, but still, against a key interconference opponent in St. John's from the Big East. Let's check in with Heather Cox who talked with both coaches at the half. And both coaches said rebounding was critical on the plus side of the boards. Maryland coach Gary Williams said the rebounding prowess keyed their success in the first half. The key keep the level up. They know they play tomorrow night. They don't want to slide. Now on the other side St. John's out rebounded by 13 which affected both their offense and defense. Look for St. John's to try and do a better job of on ball defense in the second half guys. And Gist with a basket, it was on the defensive end in terms of rebounding. Only five defensive rebounds for St. John's. They did well on the offensive glass. Well, Maryland shot 54% in that half, so there weren't a whole lot of caroms to, to corral. And conversely, 21% from the field by St. John's gave Maryland a lot of opportunities to go get the ball and push it. Lamont Hamilton with a basket for St. John's. The Red Storm won 12 games a year ago, tied for 13th in the Big East, did not make it to the Big East Tournament, which is held at Madison Square Garden, essentially the home floor for St. John's as Mike Jones commits the foul, his second and the first on Maryland in the half. And that play was indicative of the poor defense St. John's played. Mike Jones just able just to step right in front of the basket and receive without even being contested, without the defender stepping in front of him. Take a look at Jones, just flash right in the post. No one contests him, no one seems to try to beat him to the ball. You know, when you're down this far in St. John's, the one thing you have to step up is your defensive intensity, and you can't allow guys to catch the ball where they want. 
I misspoke. I said Jones committed the foul. Obviously Patterson for St. John's committing his second personal and the first on St. John's. Three threes for Mike Jones in the game. 62-23 Maryland and they keep the full court, uh, full court pressure on. Here's Patterson. Offensive rebound by Spears and swatted out of there by a Beckway. And then St. John's turns it over as Hamilton can't catch it. We mentioned our second semifinal game is next. Michigan State and Texas. The Longhorns arriving about 30 minutes ago in the rain here in New York City. And you can't miss them with that burnt orange. <laughs> Although here in New York City, that's probably stylish. Can't wait to see Kevin Durant in burnt orange. Durant, a terrific-looking freshman McDonald's All-American for Texas. Here's a foul on a Beckway. That's the first on Maryland, his second personal. Here are the numbers for Durant so far this season. Nine and a half rebounds to go along with uh, 21 points per game. He's six feet nine. He can handle the ball. He can shoot from outside as well. And a pretty good defender. Long arms, able to get out in the passing lanes and really works that defense. You know, in talking to him yesterday at the Texas practice, I talked to him about the height that's followed him. And he said, you know, he doesn't worry about it. The one thing that'll fulfill that hype is if they win. And that's a pretty good attitude from a guy that a lot of people think might be a first or second round, second pick in the NBA draft next year if he chooses to leave. That was on Gist, his first, second on Maryland. Checking with Heather Cox for more on superstar freshman Kevin Durant. Well, Texas in an unusual situation, really trying to cram four years into one because nobody thinks that Kevin Durant will stay in Austin after one season. People projecting him as the number two draft pick next year, as you guys mentioned. So a lot of unheard of things, like the first ever true freshman to go to Big 12 Media Day. They knew everybody wanted to talk to him, so they did the unheard of and are exposing him early in those 21 points show that he's ready to live up to that expectation. And Texas Head coach Rick Barnes told us today that when Durant was notified that he was going to be going to Big 12 Media Day, he wanted to bring his whole team. He said, why can't we all go? He's very team-oriented. Maryland ball leading 62-25, opening three minutes of the second half. Guest on the drive, finds Strawberry. Can't hit the fall away, and rebounded by Lawrence. And a foul on the floor on Strawberry trying to cut off the angle as Eugene Lawrence was uh, driving to the basket. Well, that's one of the few aggressive moves you've seen out of the St. John's offense. And again, at this point, Norm Roberts looks at the scoreboard and says, you know what, the chance of us coming back are pretty slim. This is an opportunity to teach. This is an opportunity to start working on execution. You know, maybe win the small battles, win five minutes here, win five minutes there. I mean, indicative of the fact that he has now chalked this up to being a teaching lesson, St. John's has used up all of their timeouts. The only way they can stop the clock is to wait for the television timeout. And another three from Mike Jones, his fourth. He's got 16 in the game. Well, St. John's didn't get blown out a whole lot last year, even though they were three games under 500. And Lenny talked about this in the first half. They beat Pittsburgh. And they beat Louisville. Two teams at the time that were ranked. Pitt was in the top ten. Another Maryland foul. Fourth team foul on the Terps. And Norb Roberts expecting this team to be better. And most people you talk to associated with the Big East think St. John's will be a team that makes it to New York for the Big East tournament and is on the cusp of the NCAA tournament. Many people feel that uh, this is a, a middle-of-the-pack Big East team. And last year, that's good enough to get you in the field of 65. Absolutely, but this is a, a difficult time for Norm Roberts as a coach. This year they wanted to play up-tempo, they wanted to run up and down with teams, and here Maryland pressured them, gave them the opportunity, and in this particular challenge his team failed. Now as a coach, you got to go back and you got to think, okay, you know, am I rushing them? Maybe we ought to rein it in a little bit. Maybe we ought to become a little more deliberate like we were last year. Maybe we're just trying to run before we've been able to walk. How do you handle this as a head coach? How critical are you of your basketball team, and how much are you encouraging your team after a 40-point 
game at halftime, essentially. Well, you've got to provide constructive criticism, but you can't take away their confidence. You can't abuse them. Certainly, everybody has bad games, and obviously, Norm Roberts and his staff are going to pour over the tape of this game and recognize where they can improve, and that list is long, at least against Maryland in this particular game. But again, this is early in the season, and your hope, if you're a St. John's fan, is that they're a different team here in November, or here and in December and January than they are here in November. Follows on Eric Hayes. That's a 15 foul on Maryland. And coming up as the holiday season starts, St. John's will once again learn a valuable lesson off the court. We'll tell you how the Red Storm will help out in the community next week when we come back. Michigan, Ohio State at 2.30 Eastern, followed by Cal USC at 8, Saturday on ABC. Man, this thing is smunchy. Smunchy? Soft, melty, crunchy. It's smunchy. I'm thinking Crafelty. Crunchy, soft, melty. No, it's more of a crunchy, chewy, cheesy. Crunchy, easy. Nice. I know. Knuckle me. Thank nice. You. Oh, okay. I'll just... Taco Bell's Cheesy Gordita Crunch. Warm flatbread covered in three melted cheeses. Wrapped around a crunchy taco and topped with a zesty pepper jack sauce. It's a textural taste sensation. To get crunchy, chewy, and cheesy, think outside the bun. Sports sedans have come to be regarded as purely machine. But when design functions as a display of human skill and craftsmanship, rather than simply mechanical precision, the machine can evoke emotion. It can shape how you experience the road. It can go beyond machine. The all-new G is here. And it's from Infinity. Y'all ready to order? And y'all ready to check me out in the amazing picture clarity of DirecTV HD? It's broadcast in 1080i. I totally don't know what that means, but I want it. For the best in HD, get DirecTV. Hey, Mom, what's going on? Hey, baby. How was Vegas? Vegas? Uh, Vegas was cool. We saw the Blue Man Group. Oh. Yeah, you know those guys. They, they don't talk, but it's funny. <laughs> and, and they're blue. You okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Um, can I call you back a little later? Sure. Good job. Smooth. When you've got nighttime sinus problems, the pressure, congestion, and pain are written all over your face. But NyQuil Sinus lets you turn out the light on sinus symptoms so you can sleep. NyQuil Sinus. Good night, sinus pain. Maryland, less than 16 minutes away from advancing to tomorrow night's championship game here in New York City, where the St. John's men's basketball team is very involved in the community. And with more on that story, here's Heather Cox. Well, St. John's is a private Catholic university with a school-wide mission of giving back to the poor. So every year around Thanksgiving, the team, the team spends a day at the St. John's Bread and Life Soup Kitchen, which resides on the property of the original St. John's campus in Brooklyn. And donning aprons, rubber gloves, and yes, their favorite hairnets, the coaches and the players provide turkey dinners to hundreds of homeless and underprivileged Brooklyn residents. They'll visit next once again on Wednesday before they take a well-deserved Thanksgiving break of their own, Dave. You know, this is a great opportunity for St. John's, not just with its basketball exploits, but the opportunities they have in the community to, to win some fans here in New York City. Well, absolutely. Again, remember that with apologies, or actually no apologies, no disrespect to Fordham, Manhattan, and some of the other prominent universities in this city. St. John's defines college basketball here in New York, and with the tradition that they've had for so long, you know, there are so many other things that they need to do and continue to do to maintain that position of uh, recognition here in New York. And I think aside from the game of basketball, being able to impart those values to their young men is so very important. That's what maintains that tradition and also maintains the admiration of many folks like myself who live in this city. Gist gets the roll. Maryland's lead is 41. By the way, the largest defeat for St. John's in its history was 41 points back in 1951. Kennedy 81, St. John's 40. My question to you, New York native Glenn Elmore, is who is Kennedy? <laughs> As the three goes, <laughs> you're thinking, Mason, it's the three from the corner. As mentioned, back in 1951, they lost by 41 points. 67-29, Maryland after that three, and then Anthony Mason Jr. comes up with a steal. 
And a foul from behind by Vasquez. That's his third. 17 foul on Maryland. And Gary Williams still teaching. A little upset with Vasquez and nonchalance and handling the ball. Again, despite this lead, it's a never-ending battle for perfection. And again, you don't win national championships. You don't go to Final Fours. You're not the ninth winning as active coach without having that, that passion for perfection. He is third all-time in coaching wins in the Atlantic Coast Conference behind, obviously, Dean Smith and number two, Mike Krzyzewski. But 19 wins is no longer good enough at Maryland where and just getting to the Sweet 16 would have done it six or seven years ago, but you win a national title in 2002, and obviously expectations are heightened. Ricky Torres comes into the game for Anthony Mason after the free throws. And Dave, to that point, again, the Natives have been restless in College Park, particularly after last year. A lot of people could point to the tournament selection committee and blame them. A lot of people have pointed to Gary and blamed him, particularly with some of the internal issues that the team has had. But make no mistake about it. You know, he's not, Gary Williams is not going to give up. He's pushing his guys. He's taking a different tack with some of his younger guys, not nearly as tough on him. Probably giving him more love than toughness. And it's starting to pay off. Obviously, when you take a look at the play of Vasquez Hayes, who come out here and play with a great deal of confidence. The seniors are used to it. Mm -hmm. Earthquake igniting dunk by James Gist on the other end. The basket is still moving. Hill able to score over Gist. That's what Daryl Hill can do. He can score. Two years ago, averaged 21 points per game. Missed a good part of last year with a knee injury. He is the sixth man this year for St. John's, but Norm Roberts really considers him a sixth starter. And I suspect when they play teams that are going to pressure you with Hill's ball handling ability, you'd expect him to start the game. Mike Jones with a basket. Obviously, it's hard to gauge St. John's, but coming into this game, I know you were in the company thought that this would be a team that would be improved this year. Yeah, I, I thought they'd be a competitive team, and I still believe that. I think this is one of those anomalies where you got a hot Maryland team with that senior urgency with guys who know how to play against a team that may have veterans on the team, but they're not accustomed to the style of pushing the ball up the floor. You know, they got swarmed right away. They got confused. They got scared, and then that's what put them in the hole. That's Len Morton. I'm Dave Pash. Heather Cox here as well for Maryland and St. John's. Game one of our doubleheader tonight. Semifinal action of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic benefiting coaches versus cancer. Game two, 18th ranked Texas, mostly freshmen taking on Michigan State. Both those teams lost a lot of talent to the NBA, but usually at those schools, at least with Rick Barnes at Texas and Tom Izzo at Michigan State, reload and we look forward to watching Kevin Durant among the youngsters that will take part in game two following this one. Ricky Torres, a sophomore from the Bronx at the line. St. John's picked ninth in the preseason Big East coaches poll. Eight teams made it to the NCAA tournament a year ago out of the Big East, a record. Four went to the Sweet 16 and two went to the Elite Eight. Most think this is the Elite League in college basketball right now. Well, again, you look at teams that are in the Big East that might be in the top 25. You know, we're talking about Georgetown, Pittsburgh, Syracuse, UConn, probably Marquette. And then you've got a couple of maybes, three maybes. Villanova, Louisville, DePaul might be able to slip in there in and out. Again, the competition, quality, and it pushes the other programs to try to keep up. DePaul off to a slow start, 0-2, but no question, DePaul has talent. Sammy Mejia, very talented player. Louisville, after a down season, brings back some talent. And interesting to see how a team like Villanova does after uh, losing all the players they did in Connecticut. Well, they were certainly the beneficiaries of, of someone else's misfortune when Kelvin Sampson left Oklahoma. They had a young man, Scotty Reynolds, who was one of the top point guards, and he ultimately went to Villanova after Oklahoma released him. And you take a look at the preseason poll right there. You know, Pittsburgh and Georgetown, uh, both of them can actually compete for a national title in my mind. And there is uh, the second half. Top 12 go to New York City for the Big East Tournament. The other four are excluded. The bottom four, Cincinnati, preseason number 13. They just missed out on the NCAA Tournament a year ago. 
They have a new head coach and Mick Cronin one of three new head coaches in the Big East and there's a new head coach in the New York City area at Seton Hall Bobby Gonzalez who was a coach in Manhattan taking over for Lewis Orr. Substitution yes alone as returns and Hamilton will go to the bench 71 36 Maryland by 35 seven minutes gone by here in the second half. And again, uh, the mainstays in that top 25 from the Big East, I think, obviously, will be Pittsburgh and Georgetown, probably UConn. But again, you look at Syracuse, the question mark will be, you know, will that big front line that came on at the end with the help of heroics by Jerry McNamara, you know, will they be able to integrate Paul Harris, the much ballyhooed freshman, into that mix and get the job done? Certainly have the size and the experience. 15 now for DJ Strawberry after that basket. We talked about Kevin Durant being a fabulous freshman. You got Paul Harris at Syracuse, preseason newcomer of the year in that league. And how's this for a little pressure? Jim Beheim has been on record saying that Harris is the best freshman in the country. How about that? With a period after it. And that means he's better than Kevin Durant and Greg Oden, who some think will be the top two picks in the NBA draft next year. Here's a Beckway. Scored St. John's by himself in the first half, 22 to 21. He has not scored in the second. Obviously, they haven't needed his points though. Beckway driving on Calhoun, and a St. John's foul, only the second team foul on the Red Storm. Maryland has already committed nine team fouls in this half. Maryland in command, expecting to advance to play either Michigan State or Texas tomorrow night in the title game. Get ready for college hoops. Reddick dishes it to the perimeter. Gets it. Baseline. Reddick fires. Buries it. 2K Sports College Hoops 2K7 features. Chant Creator. Team Unity. Advanced Ball Control. The number one college hoops franchise four years running. Coming soon for Xbox 360, Xbox, and PlayStation 2. Rated E for everyone. Engineered to alter your experience. Crafted to evoke emotion. Designed to go beyond machine. The all new 306 horsepower G from Infinity. You know what really bugs the experts at Oral B? A regular manual toothbrush can leave a lot more plaque bugs on your teeth. Millions of acid-producing plaque bugs. So they invented new Oral-B Vitality, a rechargeable brush under $20. It moves almost 8,000 times a minute and reduces up to two times more plaque than a manual. Plug in Vitality, turn on a healthier smile. New Oral-B Vitality. Or try the effective yet gentle cleaning action of new Oral-B Vitality Sonic. Brush like a dentist. The Da Vinci Code, now on DVD. Discover the secret symbols hidden within the film. People rarely notice things right in front of their eyes. First time you see the movie, you never notice. A sort of a code within the code. Alias Omens Codes. Da Vinci. You could win great treasures. Go to Yahoo Movies to enter and play the one-of-a-kind Unlock the Code sweepstakes. We are the Grail Quest. No! Discover the Da Vinci Code. Seek the truth. Now on two-disc DVD. Scott Reese with a Sports Center in-game update. Good ball game over on ESPN. The backyard brawl. West Virginia and Pitt. Tyler Palco with his second Close touchdown to toss of the day. This one 15 yards to Oderick Turner. 14-14 at Pitt. 11-15 before the break. Dave. We are talking about father-son combinations involving this game. DJ Strawberry of Maryland with his dad, Daryl Strawberry, in attendance. You got Odessa Turner's son, O'Derek Turner, getting it done for Pittsburgh. And this is a big game for West Virginia still. They're eighth in the uh, BCS standings presented by Allstate. Who knows if Cal beats USC. You got the loser of Ohio State and Michigan. If uh, West Virginia should run the table, and maybe Florida and Notre Dame lose again, maybe the Mountaineers find their way back into the BCS championship game picture. Well, considering Ohio State has won, Michigan State's two, and you look at how closely uh, connected they are, this you know, a fractional difference. If one of them loses, how do they fall, fall so far down that they're not still in the national championship picture? Well, they may not. It certainly depends on what you know, Florida does in the SEC title game. Notre Dame has to play USC 
what happens in that game and you know, what happens with Rutgers and what happens if Rutgers goes undefeated. Well, that's been the talk that, you know, it's the winner of this Ohio State Michigan game goes. And the loser may be out of luck, but in the end, I just don't see how they can drop no matter what the guys below them do because there's a difference between this top two and the rest. Larry Wright with a basket on the other end and then a St. John's foul. And another game coming up next, the other team from Michigan, Michigan State and number 18, Texas, in our second semifinal game here at the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer. Michigan State looking for a football coach and... Tom Izzo, the basketball coach, uh, reaching out to Steve Mariucci to see his interest, and many people think that won't happen, but well, the Spartans as a basketball team have some work to do. They were knocked out in the first round last year by George Mason, and they lost a lot of the guys that were on that team. Here's Ricky Torres in the front court, and the easy layup for St. John's. But when you talk to Tom Izzo about that loss, yeah, they felt bad after it occurred. But a couple of nights later, they felt pretty good watching George Mason yeah. beat North Carolina. And then weeks afterwards, they realized that they lost to a very good team. Although, Tom will admit that George Mason, with their quickness, really took Michigan State out of their game. And he allowed that to happen. Drew Neitzel, the only returning starter for Michigan State. Osby bumped by Yesalonis and will go to the line for two. We talked with Tom Izzo earlier today about his young Spartan basketball team. We're, we're young, and yet we're not a, quite as young as Texas, but inexperienced. We're probably more inexperienced than Texas. And, and uh, you know, we, we're, we're making some baby steps. I, I, I like the steps we're making. It just, uh, we're having trouble with our depth. You know, we have, have 10 guys on scholarship, really, and, uh, and not a lot in the backcourt. Well, Shannon Brown went to the NBA draft, so you lost him. And we mentioned Neitzel is their only returning starter. And... Well, he played mostly point guard last year, but going to be called upon to score more this year. And yeah. Cosby gets the second free throw. Excuse me, Ron. No, that's okay. They've got some guys that are starting to step up. Travis Walton, their acknowledged leader, probably the toughest guy on that team, a guy who did get some minutes last year, stepped into the playmaking position. You know, a couple of guys on the front line that have demonstrated they can play Izzo ball, which is a tough defense, tenacious rebounding, and just overall toughness out there. As Tom said, they're taking baby steps. Guys are learning, feeling their way. I don't underestimate any Tom Izzo coach team after a year or two. Yes, Alonis with the basket for St. John's. If Beckway can't score from Maryland, but it will stay Terrapin's basketball. Beckway with a terrific first half, 22 points. Had a double-double in the first half. He's stuck on 22, but he also has 14 rebounds. And again, Maryland led by 37 at the break. St. John's foul now on Torres. And that is the uh, 15 foul on St. John's. Nine committed by Maryland. Second personal on Torres. This is a young St. John's team, too, if you think about it. You've got seniors in Hamilton and Spears and Daryl Hill, but you've got Karan Calhoun, and Avery Patterson is in his first year. He's a junior, but a junior college transfer. And I think Avery Patterson is the one guy that St. John's counted on in a game like this, if they could run the ball, if they could find some open spots, penetrate and kick. The Patterson is a terrific three-point shooter, but he was introduced today to some big-time college basketball defense. Remember, St. John's beat Northern Florida and Navy, as I said, not exactly the top 25. As we take a look at DJ Strawberry right here, using that athleticism high on the glass, using the quickness to get head and shoulders past his man. Last year, Strawberry averaged 10 points per game. In the early start this year, he's at 17 points per game, has 17 tonight. Do you expect that to continue? Is he a guy that can score 17, 18 points a night for it? Well, he's going to have to, unless other guys start to demonstrate that they're able to carry them. And Mike Jones has done that. And now, Ken A. Beckway in this game, having been subpar in the first three games, has demonstrated that he can score as well. White with the miss. Strawberry, nice feed, and the layup is good for Milburn. Landon Milburn has been banged up, but getting the play tonight, a freshman from Georgia gets the basket, and Lamont Hamilton commits the foul for St. John. Again, this has been Maryland all evening. Off the glass, off, trans, off uh, steals, getting into transition. They got guys who can run and guys who can finish. We talked about this a bit in the first half, but 
Even though Maryland was picked to finish seventh in the league, if you're Carolina, BC, Duke, Georgia Tech, you got to be taking notice by what we've seen from Maryland really on both ends. Uh, and the balance that they have and the depth they have with their offense and their ability to defend. And that's the key word, depth. You know, they can start throwing waves of guys at you like the Maryland Terrapins of old and start to wear teams down with that pressure as long as they get guys coming off the bench contributing. Foul on a Beckway. That's his third person, fourth personal rather, 10 team foul on Maryland. This is one way uh, to let St. John's hang around for a bit, even though it's a 37 point deficit. It's about to let him shoot free throws the rest of the game, and that will be the case now with 10 team fouls on Maryland. Gary Williams signed a two year contract extension recently that will run his deal through 2011 as Hamilton hits the first free throw. Now, that deal could extend to 2014. You think about what he did. You know, Norm Roberts kind of in a similar position when Gary Williams took over the Maryland program trying to reestablish it. And it took Williams some time, and Roberts can only hope that you know, 15 years later, he'll not only be at St. John's, but they'll be a perennial challenger for their league title and for a national title. And part of that formula for Gary Williams is to go out and recruit guys that become anchors for the program. He had one in Walt Williams who could have left but decided to stay. You know, did a nice job for that team. And that drew some other guys from the Baltimore-Washington area, most notably Ron Dixon. And Gary will credit Ron coming to school, sticking around as being one of those kinds of guys, again, that provided that anchor mentality where you can recruit other guys around him and ultimately resulting in a national championship. Torres with a basket. Well, after Maryland won the 2002 national title, Chris Wilcox went pro, and some think that maybe that was a reason why they dipped after that. Foul on Maryland, so two free throws coming up. That's on Parrish Brown. And you still see Gary Williams coaching regardless of the score in time. He's working it. <laughs> he is working it. Really one of the top coaches in college basketball. Probably does not get the credit that he deserves. But you know what? He may not get the popular credit. But if you talk to other coaches, yeah. you know, they'll tell you he's a competitor. He knows the game. And sometimes it might be difficult to listen to him, but he certainly can teach the game. And Gary knows that. He knows when to pick his spots, when to get on his guys, and when to give him a pat on the back. But again, results speak for themselves, and we've gone over his resume. And, you know, guy's just done a tremendous job starting out as a high school coach in, in southern New Jersey. He's climbed the ladder. Going to improve to 4-0. One of their wins uh, prior to tonight is Gistis fouled was against Vermont. At the time, Gary Williams wasn't sure how big that was, but Vermont beat Boston College by 14 points. So that makes the win against the Catamounts look a whole lot better. And who knows, maybe that contributed to a little momentum and confidence for Maryland coming into this tournament. And it's uh, Gravis Vasquez. Comes back into the game. Hamilton will go to the bench now with five personal fouls as he's fouled out of the game. With more on Gary Williams, let's bring in Heather. Well, the intensity you've seen throughout the second half is no surprise. Talking to him at halftime, he was emphatic, even with the big lead, about keeping the level up. And I could tell it wasn't just coach speak. You can tell by the intensity and the way that he continues to pace that sideline. He does not want to open the door at all for tomorrow night's opponent, whether it be Texas or Michigan State. He's working on intimidation right now, it seems. Yeah, Gary's been all about statements, and he knows when to make the right statements. He's got a team now that he believes that their potential is almost unlimited. Again, to be among some of the best teams, and he and I talked about that today. You know, he really couldn't give an answer. He didn't want to talk about where where they might finish, where they might go in, as far as the tournament selection, et cetera, et cetera. He just wants them to play to their level of potential, and he thinks that that's a long way. Offensive foul on Aaron Spears. That's his second personal, so it's Maryland basketball. That's the 19th foul on St. John's. But uh, no free throws on a player control foul. Guess driving on Calhoun. Got it blocked, but got it back. And tapped out of bounds by St. John's. 
Former St. John's head coach Luke Karnasek in the building. We'll talk with him when we come back. And Kevin Durant's in the building as well, the outstanding freshman for Texas. The Longhorns in Michigan State in game two of our doubleheader. Coming up from Madison Square Garden. She is the team mom of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mother of 53 boys. Big boys. That's why she's big on Campbell's Chunky. Campbell's Chunky. Hearty meals packed with big chunks of beef, chicken, or sausage. Savory soups and chili to feed an NFL-sized hunger. Team Mom, we salute you. Campbell's Chunky. A new Chunky Healthy Request. Meals that fill you up right. So, what's it like with a new addition to the family? It's great. I was nervous during the delivery, but afterwards, it's instant and unconditional love. It's the best thing that ever happens to you. Wow. You see that bundle of joy, and you instantly know your purpose in life. Watching college football. It's beautiful. Watch college football, Saturday afternoons on ABC. Presented by Best Buy. College football lives here. Get any new Jeep vehicle, like the new Wrangler Unlimited, equipped with a Sirius satellite radio, and you'll get a 12-month subscription to the best radio on radio. Now I'm going to try a hurricane. Show off. I watch the best movies on stars from DirecTV. I watch the best movies on stars from DirecTV. I watch the best Oh, yeah. It's begun. Stars, the ultimate movie destination, with a new hit movie premiering every Saturday night, with more channels, more choices, more movies, over 600 different movies each month. Movie lovers, unite! <laughs> Tune in this month for Glory Road on Stars, channels 520 and 521. How many people forget that this is the seventh all-time winningest program in college basketball? Talking about St. John's and Lou Carnesecca back in the glory days. Look out for Bill Winnington. Back with Mark Jackson, Chris Mullen, and St. John's going to the Final Four in 1985. Walter Berry and at that time the St. John's Redmen. They won the Big East titles in 83 and 1986. Lou Carnesecca did a tremendous job. Remember those days going up against John Thompson and Georgetown. They'd wear the same sweater sometimes when they square off. And Lou Carnesecca is with Heather Cox. And the legendary coach has actually graduated to coat and tie. I hardly recognized him out here. Now coach after coaching for so many years. And this is certainly not the night that you were hoping for. How hard is it to sit here and watch? Well, you know, I've been coached here. I've been through that myself. And you have to accept it. The main thing is what you do in the next game. And our kids will come back. I have that feeling. You've been very supportive of Coach Roberts. What, in your mind, are the next steps for St. John's getting back to prominence? Well, I, I think we're on, we're on the right road. He's getting good players in. Uh, I think he works them very hard. They represent the university very well. I'm proud of what he's doing. And we just just a little more time. It doesn't come easy. Absolutely not. Now, I have been told that you are a master at remembering virtually every play of every game you've ever coached. What stands out to you as one of the most special St. John's moments? Well, of course, I'd have to, there was a lot of game, great games, but the game that I remember the most, we were playing Syracuse for the Big East Championship, and in the final seconds, Ronnie Rowan dribbles up into the corner, hits a jumper, the place goes well, but the game is not over. I have this guy, the Pearl, takes the ball, goes all the way down the court, and is going to lay it in. Here comes Walter Berry and knocks it out. And we were almost knocked out your, your microphone, too. Certainly very animated about it all, guys. He also won here in 1983 against Maryland's own Gary Williams. And, yeah, he remembers every second of it all. You know, Heather and Lenny, one of the great things about the old Big East was you could off-camera have Luke Karnaseka, John Thompson, Jim Beham, and Roly Massimino talk, and you'd be able to tell which is which. It's just the personalities from the Big East some 20 years ago. Let's take you back to 1986. That game that... Uh, Luke Karnaseka was uh, talking about. There's a shot by Rowan, and then comes Pearl down the court. And here comes Barry. And St. John's hangs on 70-69, winning the 1986 Big East Tournament title. 
Well, you talk about a rivalry back then, the three teams, Syracuse, St. John's, and Georgetown. That was quite the rivalry, back and forth. And obviously the giants of the game were coaching at that time. Jim Beheim, the sole remaining of the trio. Looking back at uh, those glory days, the Final Four that we talked about in 85 and the two Big East titles, including that tournament championship win against Syracuse, 15 NCAA tournament appearances. And uh, under Mike Jarvis, for a while there, they were rolling. They got to an Elite Eight back in 1999, beat Maryland in the Sweet 16 that year. Ron Artest was a member of St. John's. And then there were some off-the-court transgressions at the end of uh, Jarvis's tenure. Norm Roberts trying to revitalize this program. But it's a struggle now. They're getting blown out by Maryland as Giss now has 12 points. Maryland's led by 41. It's currently a 35-point lead with six minutes to go. And again, St. John's will get to play tomorrow night. It'll play in the third place game against the loser of Michigan State, Texas. Maryland will play the winner of that game, which is coming up next here on ESPN2 as Anthony Mason misses from outside. And that's the beauty of, of playing the next night. Again, we talked about it, even Norm Roberts talked about it. A game like this might be that first step towards respectability here in his third year of a three-year plan, but that step is delayed. Tomorrow could be the first yeah. step. All they've got to do is rally, regroup, and most importantly get their confidence back as a team right now Maryland has thoroughly taken their hearts St. John's hearts and for this game you know they have to capitulate wave the white flag and Norm Roberts knows how important these games are here a chance to get on the front page of the paper not like this no this isn't the way you want to do it and, and, and the tabloids are cruel <laughs> I, I can think of something that they'll probably say that it's not very flattering for St. John's, but you'll have to chuckle. But then again, St. John's will have their chance to make their own positive headlines going forward. Now Michigan State number 18, Texas, coming up next in game two of our semifinal doubleheader. And the winners, which uh, will be Maryland in this game, and then either Michigan State or Texas meet tomorrow night. And St. John's will take on the loser of our second game tonight in the consolation game at 7 Eastern tomorrow night. Here's Parrish Brown down floor, gets the layup. Well, the thing about the depth, and, and I think Gary Williams leaves the door open, is that when guys are out on the floor, they're playing for playing time. So it doesn't matter whether you're up 10 or 40, that when you're out there, you've got to continue to compete and continue to hustle. The better you do, the more playing time you get, and you got to leave that open and promote that competitiveness from within. And it appears they can go 9 or 10 deep. You've got... Bambali Osby, a junior college transfer who played his freshman year at New Mexico, who's given you quality minutes in the lane. Aaron Pass that's picked off by Yesalonis for St. John's. Three from the corner is good for Larry Wright. He's one of those uh, freshmen for St. John's who can shoot the basketball. He was a finalist for Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan last season from Saginaw, Michigan. Strawberry looking to break uh, a career high in scoring. He's got 19, which ties a career high, missing the three. Osby working hard underneath, and a foul is called. Take a look at that body, and you recognize guys want to get out of the way. Well, Gary Williams uh, more pleased with the outcome of this game than he was in the Big East Championship here at the Garden against St. John's when he was head coach at Boston College. Back in 1983, Chris Mullen had 24 points. St. John's over BC, 85-77. Michael Adams was a star for Williams at Boston College and now an assistant coach after a stint as a head coach in the WNBA. Adams is in his second year on the bench. And a couple other players uh, for Gary Williams' assistants on the staff, Keith Booth and Chuck Trezell, lefty son. There's Michael. Remember that shot? I would pay right now, even though he's in a suit, just to see Michael Adams come out and shoot a three, wouldn't you, Lenny? Remember that awkward three-point shot he had? It went in a lot. I was down there at the summer camp from Maryland, so I saw him shoot it a lot. I, I don't know if I'd pay for it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a time. And Michael, again, learning the trade, doing a nice job. You know, does very well with the guards when you watch them practice imparting his knowledge. And Chuck Drizell, again, a guy who's grown up in college basketball, was a quality high school coach before coming to Maryland, was assistant at Georgetown for a while. 
Dave Neal lost it underneath St. John's basketball as we near the four minute mark here in the second half. Again, coming up after this one, Michigan State and 18th ranked Texas. Some of the best youngsters in the country will be showcased, in particular, Kevin Durant, who's from Maryland, by the way, but elected to go to Texas. Offensive rebound for Yeselonas after the missed three by Mayo. Larry Wright looking for a second straight three, can't get it to drop. So Maryland will advance to the championship game tomorrow night. Tip-off will be around 9, 9.30 Eastern time after the third place game. Milburn missing the three. Chakura with the rebound. Nice pass and the jam by Milburn. Langdon Milburn slowed by a sprained ankle. Didn't know you had that kind of rise. Now even with the gimpy ankle. Maryland in the zone. Mayo and Osby comes over with the swap and what this is demonstrating to us again you mentioned it before about other ACC teams waking up and taking notice of Maryland after they've kind of slept the last two years uh, comparatively what you notice is the depth you know I'm looking at Paris Brown here Paris Brown is like the fourth point guard pretty decent point guard to play I mean you look at Hayes you look at Vasquez Remember, D.J. Strawberry played point 31 out of 32 games last year for Maryland in a 19-win season, and now you got Brown. So there is depth at many of the position. Osby playing on the front line. They can spell a Beckway. Not bad. Maryland picked to finish seventh in the preseason poll by the ACC media. Carolina got 59 first-place votes, almost all of them. Now, uh, wouldn't expect it any other way, considering the talent that they had last year that would have grown another year, as well as the talent that they brought in, probably the best recruiting class or one of the best recruiting classes in the country. Neal fouled, and he'll go to the line for two. Gary Williams still coaching away, still intense on that Maryland bench. But this might draw a smile. Freshman Lance.